This episode of Talking With Tech is brought to you by Smartbox, makers of Grid3 and Grid for iPad, a complete symbol and text AAC solution. And by Twiddle, the safe sensory therapy tool that can reduce stress and stimulate brain function in children with autism and sensory seeking behaviors. Well, welcome back once again to Talking With Tech. This is Luke Kostuber, joined as always by Mr. Chris Begay. How are you? Fantastic, and you? I'm, I'm always so good. I really am. I'm like always smiling when we're doing this. This is so much fun. And Rachel Madel, how are you? I'm fantastic. I just got back from Hawaii. Yeah, so tell us about that a little bit so I can see the anger. It was amazing. I worked with the Autism Society of Hawaii and I did a parent training. It was amazing. I love that organization. And then I got to spend a few days in Hawaii. So I was snorkeling and paddle boarding and hiking and it was just fantastic. That, that must have been a real hardship. It you. was. It was really tough. I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> um, and, and, so what were you presenting on? Just how to use, you know, technology. I, I, I used a broad term like technology instead of AAC because um, I was talking mostly to parents and just using technology to support kids with autism and communication everywhere from emerging communicators to kids who are struggling with social pragmatic skills. So I kind of touched on different areas. Uh, going into it, I didn't know who the audience was going to be and what level their child was at. So most of them um, were kind of at the emergent communication uh, level. So it was a lot of beginners. And so I was teaching a lot about core words and, you know, just basic options for parents when your ch child's not able to, to talk verbally or, you know, verbal approximations aren't working. What, what can we do? So I kind of touched on some, some low tech options and then high tech and vocabulary and just kind of the basics, but it was really, it was really good. I ended up answering questions for about an hour afterwards. Um, there were a lot of questions as there normally are with parent trainings and it was just, it felt like really good. That's always a good sign when people stick around to, to, answer, to ask questions afterwards. Everyone leaves all at once. I'm like, oh, I didn't do a good job here. Womp womp. <laughs> those, are, those, are, those are my favorite kind of presentations to give, I think, the ones that are kind of like mixed audience, you know, where you get the, the parents and the clinicians because that's like, that's who we want to involve, right, in our intervention. And so it's so neat. Although you, then you do end up, you know, sort of talking about the same concepts a lot, right? Um, but it, I, not, it can't be every day that we do the, the super dorky eye gaze talks so I guess unfortunately um, but speaking of my favorite style so there's a similar style of conference that's coming up right which is all online and totally free called AAC in the cloud which you're also presenting I am so it's the 10 cardinal rules to AAC implementation that's the, the name of my presentation and I'm really excited um, I kind of touched on this when I uh, spoke back at in CASHA, um, which is California Speech and Hearing Associations Conference, but I'm kind of deep diving. So for an hour, I'm going to talk about implementation strategies um, and the ones that I think are the most important. Um, so I'm really excited. I can't wait to, to see who, who joins and to teach them a little bit about uh, what I think is important when it comes to AAC implementation. Rachel, give right. us a teaser. What's, what's, one, what's one of the strategies? Um, let's see. Well, I feel like... I, I talk about teaching a variety of pragmatic functions. So let's get kids beyond just requesting and asking for what they need at snack time or with food. Um, you know, we use language for a variety of purposes and especially kids, they love using language for fun things like jokes and slang and all these really cool things that we can incorporate into our treatment and uh, a, a child's AAC system so that not only are they motivated to, to communicate with us, um, but also there's a, a level of peer acceptance um, when kids are saying things that's like, you know, that's lit. Um, all these things that kids who, you know, a typical eight-year-old would say something like that. So we have to afford those opportunities to our AAC users too. Totally. That's great. Well, and it's not just kids that love, love jokes. My, I, think, I think silly kid jokes are my favorite thing in the world. I just heard a good language related one. If anyone's interested, it's uh, what's, what's a pirate's favorite letter? R? No, his first love be the C. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. I'm glad you guys laughed too. I can't stop giggling at that one. I don't know why it's so good. Well, dad I jokes. also, yeah, exact dad jokes, precisely. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also will be presenting at AAC in the cloud. Mine's going to be a little bit nerdier. It's talking about um, how to still be effective at a distance uh, as an AAC clinician. 
but we invite you, uh, you folks to check it out. It's a really good resource. It's completely free. Um, and in fact, we have all of last year's sessions, which is something like 37 hours of, of good content is up on our Roku. So if you look for um, speech science in the Roku store or on, it's actually on Amazon Fire TV now too. I forgot. Well, Talking With Tech is brought to you by Smartbox, makers of AAC solution Grid 3 for Windows and Grid for iPad. Grid is a complete symbol and text AAC system that is designed for individuals of different ages and ability levels. Uh, Grid is a single AAC system that can progress with the user as he or she grows. One thing I like about Grid is it includes Supercore, a research-based core word vocabulary grid. Supercore gives users a home grid of core words that's combined with activity-specific vocabulary. Grid also has a simplified editing process, allowing you to do anything from editing a cell to creating a new grid with a few taps or clicks. Grid also provides remote editing and cloud backup. With a Smartbox account, you can auto-sync content between Grid 3 and Grid for iPad. This allows anyone with a Windows computer and a free trial of Grid 3 to edit grid sets from anywhere, and the changes appear instantly in Grid for iPad. Your content is stored in the cloud and backed up, so you won't lose content if you lose your device. So right now, you can try Grid for free. Visit thinksmartbox.com for a free 30 or 60-day trial for either Grid 3 or Grid for iPad. This will allow you to evaluate the features of Grid, including simplified editing, remote syncing, uh, you know, let you decide if Grid is the right solution for you or your client. Um, again, visit thinksmartbox.com for that free trial. We hope you do. So there is another conference coming up though, right, Mr. Chris? Where are you headed to? Yeah, so I will not be at AAC in the cloud. I, I asked Brian Whitmer, who's kind of the organizer, if he would, you know, switch the dates. And he's like, mm, sorry, Chris, can't change it for you. <laughs> So then I went to ISTE and said, hey, can you change your date so I can go to this AAC in the cloud? And they were not willing to change for me either. I can't believe it. No one would change for me. But uh, So I have to work on getting, becoming a bigger fish, I think. <laughs> That's what this podcast is going to do for us. Things. Come on. <laughs> one day. One day we're going to be AAC celebrities and, and people are going to be developing conferences around our, our schedules. We couldn't possibly have ISTE without Chris there, so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, every AAC conference in the future apparently is going to start at one and end at four if it's around. Like <laughs> <laughs> Prime time. <laughs> exactly. So what are you presenting uh, about then? Yeah, so I'm going to ISTE, which is the International Society for Technology and Education, which is also the organization that published the book that, uh, that I just wrote. And I have two presentations coming uh, there. Uh, the first one is called Escape the Room with Instructional Strategies. And that is, uh, you know, you've been to an escape room before? You ever been, Rachel? Uh, Lucas and I have actually done an escape room together, ironically. What? Yeah, yes, at did. ASHA. <laughs> in a way, we did an escape room. And I just want to throw a little shade in case that person is listening that the one PhD cost us that room. <laughs> <laughs> we lost by one minute. So uh, a couple years ago, my wife and I went to an escape room and I walked out of there going, that's professional development right there. We are developing one. And so I uh, put one together that has been sort of popular when I go to different, I went to ATIA and did it there. And a lot of people said how they really liked it. And so I had never done it at ISTE before. And it is, the, the idea is that you, if you if like, what is an escape the room in case there are people that don't know what that is. The idea is that you are trapped in a room and you have to figure out these clues to get out. And the way we've designed this session is that uh, you have to, Get, use these clues to use technology to get out and it teaches you all about inclusive practices so like you know look for the captions and uh, here's how you hit the, the text to speech button and hit the play button and they'll reveal hidden text and things like that so uh, all sorts of different tools built in that way so that's one session that i'm doing that is a really great excited. idea i love that that sounds yeah. like the most fun presentation i could attend yeah i'm really I sad i'm missing that. this <gasps> That's what people have said, you know, and I'll tell you, though, uh, there are some people that absolutely hate it. Like they uh, at the end of it, they're like, you know, if I hadn't if someone else wasn't using my laptop or if I wasn't part of a group, I would have walked out. I hate that sort of thing because and I think it's a good uh, testament to how education kind of works is that there are certain people that need it spoon fed for them. They don't want to figure things out. Just tell me what the content is so I can spit it back out in a test. And uh, and that's uh, that's a lot how we grew up in, in education, I think. I mean, were your teachers like that? Like, learn it, spit it back out of the test, and then forget it? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and this, 100%. This is, it. Yeah. 
you know, that's, this is a different style from that. And a lot of people, it, it just does not, you know, jigger with them. You know, they're just like, wait, I, I, I'm used to learning this way where people give it to me. And then I, and you're not, you're telling me I can't do it that way. I have to figure these kind of stuff out for myself. And I'm like, well, that's life, right? And we figure this stuff out on our own. It's not some sort of script for how this all works, you know? Um, so that's one. Little session. did I know when I was a kid. I, I was in such a hurry to grow up, and it turns out, no, nope, adults don't secretly get some manual somewhere. But okay, all right, cool. I'm bought in. I want to go to that presentation. But you, you have two. I have two. Yeah, the second one I'm doing is uh, with uh, Luis Perez of Luis Perez and Kendra Grant, and they are part of the Inclusive Learning Network for ISTE, and they just wrote a book called Dive Into UDL. Um, and so we're combining my book and their book and we're doing like a, a an hour long session where people are going to come in. We're going to talk about how to redesign their uh, kind of a traditional lesson from a universal design from learning perspective. Um, and uh, our sessions are all like most sessions that we try and do. It's not like lecture. It's all interactive, you know, a few minutes of us kind of getting, getting the idea out to you. And then it's you figuring it out yourself and building and making something. In this case, it's, like I said, redesigning a lesson from a universal design for learning perspective. So, um, And then the last thing is not really a session, but I am going to be participating in what's called the Maker Playground, and the Inclusive Learning Network is doing uh, is, is kind of hosting that. So I have a little part where I'm going to be like at a little kiosk, and people can kind of come into this area and move from station to station, and my station is all about uh, making stuff with um, the Apple Clips app. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but yeah, sure. That, what, what's special about that app is that it allows you to make a video and it auto captions for you. So as you're talking, though, you see the words coming up on the screen. So you don't have to do the captioning later. It does it for you in real time, which is you know huge because captioning is something that you know one it helps everyone become better readers. Uh, if you turn the captions on, it's obviously more accessible if you have captions on your videos, and this does that for you. So I'll be showing that off, and also the Book Creator app, which I'm sure you guys know about the Book Creator app. You know, you take pictures and you make books, you know. Uh, great for literacy activities, whether you're using AAC or anything, you know. And so uh, that's just my little small corner of the maker part, but you know, there's going to be all sorts of other making stuff, you know, 3D printers and you know, it's, you know, you know how making is just kind of that cool atmosphere to, to where people brainstorm together and walk away with great ideas. Yeah. Well, I think this is all part of like a, a, a broader theme we could touch on, which is kind of like the democratization of education, right? Like that it's sort of everyone has a say now in how they're educated or how they are an educator, whether that's creating an escape room as a presentation or, you know, being a maker in the elementary school, you know, looking at assistive technology. And there are some really cool communities out there that are doing awesome stuff with things like 3D printing. Um, you know, I personally have done a lot with, uh, you know, going, okay, thinking of the name even is uh, something called a Makey Makey, which is a, a small computer board called an Arduino board that, um, you know, takes a, a small amount of electrical input and then provides a certain output. And, and that, that sounds really bizarre and esoteric, but it's neat in that I can make switches out of like anything. So, um, so one thing I've done in the past is with kids that are like really like um, sort of pre-intentional in their communication um, is uh, take like a favorite toy, for example. And um, like I did this with a stuffed bear. There was a certain student who loved the stuffed bear. And I took a, a little tiny bit of steel wire and, and put it inside this bear and connected it to this makey makey. And I was able to set that up as the switch for him. And for all, the, all that it did at that point, you know, this was a, a five-year-old with no language and, um, you know, rather profound disability was that it would sort of start and pause different activities that he was involved in, right? Like just a, just a pure intentionality sort of on off switch. But to be able to do that with this little bear that he loved was actually like way more effective than, than like a big red switch, right? Like this kid Kate cared way more about that bear. Um, so, so I, I think that's one thing that's neat about this, this sort of quote unquote maker revolution is that for one thing, it makes things really inexpensive and accessible to, to a lot of folks. But it also allows us to parlay specifically to the interests of the students that we're working with, right? Mm -hmm. I know this is, Rachel, this is something that you've been really passionate about. Yes, absolutely. And I'm really excited because you're, you're talking about makers and our interview today with Gideon Grossman. He is a maker. Um, so I'm really excited to hear, um, for our listeners to hear what he has developed. And, you know, I, I feel like this, this interview was really cool because I felt like he was, he's, he's young, he's, you know, 
he's like eager and I feel like that energy is really important in our field you know having people who are excited to create things that um, can not only be enjoyable and fun um, but also super effective um, and you know he he'll talk about his his creation it was refreshing I like the interview a lot yeah, I'm excited to hear from, from him too. So without further ado, let's listen to Mr. Gideon Grossman talk about his invention. This is Lucas Stuber for Rachel Madel and Crispy Gay with Talking With Tech. Lucas, I hear we have a new sponsor this week. I'm a big fan of toys. I'm a big fan of sensory tools. Uh, and I'm a big fan of really creative ideas. So I was at a conference a little while ago and I ran into this company called Twiddle, T-W-I-D-D-L-E. And they make these soft therapeutic aids that assist caregivers, people who specialize in autism or ADHD, developmental disabilities, even memory care and arthritis. They almost look like a hand muff that you, you put your hands into. They have them in the shape of dogs, the shape of cats. That's so fuzzy and adorable. There's one called the the Nathan that has a whole bunch of like its own fidgets on it, like a like a chewy, like a crinkly bag. They're warm. Each one of them has like a like a stress ball uh, at the center of it that you can squeeze. There's a, a storage bag with a zipper. I mean, these things are really neat. I love sensory items, especially for kids with autism. They're a game changer. They sound awesome. They sound like something I want to play with. Yeah, in fact, it's really comfortable. They're really durable and they're machine washable, uh, which is huge. I can't tell you how many times, especially in my clinic, I've had to just throw away stuff. Uh, I highly recommend it, and I can't think of a kid that wouldn't enjoy playing with one of these. So check it out, twiddle.speechnines.org. Well, welcome back once again to Talking With Tech. My name is Lucas Duber up here in not at all sunny Portland, Oregon, joined by Rachel Madel in LA. How are you? Always sunny in LA. I'm doing good. How are you? I, I'm well, always sunny in LA. It makes me, uh, makes me think of Philadelphia uh, for some reason there. For, Which is where I'm from, so full circle. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Well, <laughs> um, if you open a, 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 CD, a CD bar, we'll know why. Um, <laughs> and uh, we are joined today by uh, Gideon Grossman out of San Diego. How are you, sir? Hi, I'm doing very well. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, we're, we're thrilled to have you. Um, one thing that we're really passionate about, about, uh, you know, at Talking With Tech, and for those of you know, that you've been listening for a little while, is um, the, the fact that uh, technology has reached a point and manufacturing has reached a point that anybody with a really brilliant idea can take that idea and carry it to market, whether that's, you know, themselves through 3D printing or, um, you know, through things like Kickstarter or Indiegogo. And, um, it sounds like that's that's what you've done. You've come up with something really, really unique and really fascinating, and um, you're, you're taking it all the way. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you've created. Sure. I'm an engineer. I live down here in San Diego, and my day job is as a software developer. I'm really passionate about building my own products and my own toys in particular. Cool. This product that we're discussing today is one that I've been thinking about for two years now. And I first came up with the idea when I was acting kind of as a big brother to a family of five children. And they were such social children. We played a lot of hide and go seek and tag. And their mother, who taught them, she homeschooled them, gave them two hours a day to play on their iPads. And it made me um, unhappy to see these kids that had potential to be incredibly social people staring at a screen for two hours every day. So I said to myself, these aren't the only kids who are in this this, um, position in 2018. How can I use my engineering skills to create a toy that would encourage more face-to-face interaction, which these kids are wired to do inherently in a fun way? And that's how I came up with noisy bands. Noisy bands are these bracelets that play sound effects when you give a friend a high five. And they are primarily at this point, just a really fun toy. After meeting with various speech therapists down here in San Diego, I see that there's great potential for applying this toy in speech therapy strategies. And there are a few ideas I have in the pipeline for modifications and, and tweaking the toy to fit that, that role. So I'm really excited about all those possibilities and really excited about the toy in general. Great. One of the things that we talk a lot about is the, the concept of social reciprocity, right? Which is, can be something as simple as responding to a question or saying hello and greeting people correctly all the way up to, to high fives, you know, which, which also has this extra element of, of you know, proprioceptive input, right? Of, of having the physical interaction, which can be challenging also sometimes for kids on the spectrum. So um, 
this is cool. It gives them like a built in built in fun incentive to uh, to do that. Yeah. So I guess a few of the ideas that are flowing around in my in my head are are one to do just that to have the bracelets play sounds that when children hear them repetitively will become familiar with them, such as hello, how are you? A second idea is to make a more mobile go talk type of device where it's wrapped around the wrist and very portable. And this would allow the child to choose the sound that he or she wants to have the bracelet play before giving a high five or tweak the motion detection to pick up various hand gestures and play sounds that correspond to those gestures. Everything you just said are, um, are ideas that we've sort of been kicking around in the industry in terms of the idea of motion grammar, uh, you know, indicating, um, uh, you know, generating a certain phrase, uh, you know, all the way up to, uh, you know, to, to wearable devices. You know, I mean, people have uh, tried to do a, a lot of stuff with like the Apple Watch, for example. Part of the limitation there is the speaker, though. So from a hardware standpoint, like what, what does this thing look like? What's it capable of? First of all, it's small. It's compact. It fits on a wrist very easily. Okay. Second of all, the speaker is quite loud for that size. And the nature of how you wear the bracelet so that the speaker faces outward when you give a high five and the opportunity to wear the bracelet in the reverse direction, depending on which hand gestures are going to be used, allows the sound to reach the friend or the family member pretty directly. And it's, it's nice and clear. I haven't worked with Apple Watches much at all, so I don't have a comparison, but um, it's definitely audible and the battery lasts a long time. Cool. All right. Since I, I, I'm the hardware nerd here, so I'm going to be quiet a little bit uh, and let Rachel jump in. I apologize, Rachel. <laughs> no, I'm, you guys are talking about specifics. So what I would love to talk about is how can we actually use these and what, how can speech therapists and parents use these in a you know, functional way, which it sounds like that's kind of in your, your wheelhouse and your thinking process is how can we use these functionally? Yeah, I want this to actually be useful yeah. and not just something that sounds like it can be useful. Yeah, no. And that's why I'm really happy to be talking with you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, we work with a lot of kids who are either completely nonverbal, um, you know, not able to talk uh, or have, you know, low speech intelligibility. So they're not understood. And a lot of times, you know, they have devices and they have kind of communication systems set up. But what I love about this potential is the mobility component, right? Like being able to, to have it on you at all times. Um, we have kids who are using speech generating devices and they're stra strapping them on their bodies and, you know, having to carry them around or forgetting them in their backpack, like some of my kids. Um, so it's just really nice having that portable, uh, you know, system that could be, you know, somewhat basic with some basic needs on there um, as a way to supplement. Um, a, a high tech speech generating device, um, so they can always have it with them, um, which I think is really a really cool idea. The other thing that I really love is just this like fun component because you know in order to get kids excited about communicating, it has to be fun, um, and I just love the social interaction piece, um, you know, especially because kids with autism or kids who are nonverbal who are using you know alternative communication, um, it's. It's not always, it's, it's, it's hard to get that peer acceptance. And if you can have something really cool and fun, um, like a high five that, you know, promotes interaction and also, you know, makes kids laugh and gets them engaged. I mean, I feel like that's a win-win um, for our kids especially, but, you know, just in general. That's really good to hear. Also to that, to that point, um, that, that kind of is also a reason why children who are, um, I guess neurotypical, or that might not be the proper term. I'm not completely savvy with the speech therapy lingo. That's a good one, sure. You're on it. <laughs> and, and also children who, who, who uh, live with uh, complex communication challenges would use the bracelets in a very similar way. And that also feeds into acceptance and familiarity. It kind of puts all children on the same plane of fun. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, that's another thing that some therapists and, and um, teachers and parents have appreciated. So I've been actually been taking some notes, Rachel, while you're, while you're talking to me. And uh, <laughs> Rachel's full of wisdom. Yeah. Well, and that's, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Because no kid wants to be the one that's carrying around, you know, the communication briefcase computer thing, but you know, everybody wants to be the one that has the awesome 
wristband that makes you know cool noises especially if it can be customized or you know whatever for what you know what they want to say well as far as activating it is it is it a just is it the high five motion like could it be activated without an actual high five like just moving the hand yeah um right now the sensor is very basic it's a vibration sensor so it picks up high fives it also picks up if you wave your hand okay and it's great it's also too sensitive sometimes and i'd like to replace that simple vibration sensor with what they call an accelerometer right where you can program the specific direction and speed in which the wrist moves right i'm like having to bite my tongue because i have i have a million ideas for you we'll have to have off offline but accelerometers can be can be great i mean i've i've put accelerometers inside of like preferred stuff to animals for kids for example so you know we talk uh, in speech pathology a lot about echolalia which literally means just repeat speaking. So um, kids that'll maybe repeat the same phrase over and over again or script something from a movie. Well, this other thing we don't talk about as much called echopraxia, which um, is is often like the, the hand flapping movements, the, uh, you know, imitating physical actions mm -hmm. and putting um, something like an accelerometer into a toy where a kid is being echopraxic and doing that flapping. Um, I've seen that actually inspire sort of awareness of the of the behavior right so if they're flapping that that toy and it's suddenly making a noise or causing something to happen then they're like well wait a minute maybe i wasn't even aware that i was doing that uh you know let me let me let me think about my you know whatever that behavior is well, that's that's very interesting um and sometimes maybe they don't care and they just like the noise but that's okay too because i'm all about quality of life for these kids so so Gideon, tell us a little bit about how people can find your products, get your products. I know that you guys have um, a Kickstarter um, in July, um, but just tell us a little bit about what the future holds and how people can get a hold of this. All right. First of all, noisybands.com. It's as simple as that. No one else took that name. So noisybands.com, N-O-I-S-Y-B-A-N-D-S.com. And from there, you can find a link to the Kickstarter campaign right now it is a draft that you can view and i'm planning to launch the campaign july 4th weekend with discounts and this is going to be for the first version of the product that is a toy with pre-programmed sounds there's five characters with funny faces and they all make different categories of sound effects and from there after launching the kickstarter campaign and and uh launching the product in the business Hopefully within six months, I'll have the, the second version out with the microphone and the button where you can record, re-record your own sounds and customize them. And um, yeah, so there's also a bunch of neat photos and videos at the Facebook and Instagram links from that same website. And honestly, feel free to reach me. I'd love to hear anybody's ideas of applications and modifications to the design directions to go because I know this community is really, really savvy with all those ideas. So reach out to me and my contact information is at the bottom of that website. And we will definitely link uh, to all of those things in the show notes. So you don't need to be frantically writing them down, dear listeners. Um, Gideon, it was so great having you on. I'm really excited about uh, the potential of your product. And I think there's a lot of um, really great things that it can do for our community, uh, especially. Another really exciting tidbit about this project is that I'm donating 5% of the proceeds to the Autism Society of America and the Friendship Circle. Those are two organizations that fund research and also provide services to individuals on the autism, set, uh, on the autism spectrum and with other communication disorders in their families. Oh, perfect. Near and dear, our, our, our last podcast that just aired was the CEO of Autism Society of America. So that is near and dear to our heart. Uh, wow. Um, right on. So, uh, so fantastic choice. i uh, I, I think that's great. I can't wait uh, for, for the Kickstarter to launch. Uh, by the time uh, you guys hear this podcast, uh, it should be either about to launch or, um, or, or going to. So again, noisybands.com. We're speaking with Gideon Grossman. Um, it's, it's one thing to find somebody who's a, a, a really talented engineer that could sort of be doing anything, you know, um, and, and it's another to find someone who, who is that person, but still decides then to dedicate their time to give back to the community. And so yeah, I appreciate that, Lucas. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thanks so much to Gideon Grossman for coming on to our show. I, I love hearing about what he's created and I love thinking about uh, everything that is possible within this space uh, as a result of 
you know, the availability of things like, like 3d printers and, you know, people's access to programming. There's, there's so much we can talk about on this level. Uh, but I do recommend if you're on Facebook, even like check out AT makers. Uh, but there's, there's a number of other communities that are, that are great. Um, so do some exploring. It's part of the, part of the maker piece and also check us out, right? Absolutely. If you haven't already, please join our Facebook group, just search talking with tech, Join our group, and we love when you guys ask us questions. It's really cool to continue the conversation in the Facebook group, and when you guys post questions, everybody's able to benefit. People can answer. Um, you know, according to this episode, I feel like we could totally talk about really cool materials that you guys are using in therapy. Um, I think that's one area where every SLP is always looking for new materials and new gadgets and toys to try out. So respond in our Facebook group and let us know what you guys are using. Hey, Rachel, Lucas, uh, you guys want to play a game? I love First games. Game. So here's the game. We're going to say a word that begins with the prefix sub, but we can't say the word. You know what word I'm trying? We can't say. Whoever says that word first loses the game. You know what I mean? I'm going to start. I'm going to start. Ready? Submarine. Rachel, what's another word that starts with Subway. Sub? Subnautica. <laughs> Subatomic. Subconscious. We, yeah, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe, right. Luke said subscribe. The idea is we want you to subscribe, listeners, and that was just hopefully a fun little way to remind you that please subscribe to our podcast in iTunes or whatever podcatcher you use. Well, track us down on iTunes. Track us down on Facebook. We love to have you both places. Uh, I mean, it's, this is all about starting, literally, literally, this is all about starting conversations, right? This, uh, this whole podcast. So, um, Thank you so much for listening. We will talk to you next week. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the interview today. Uh, for Lucas Stuber, Chris Begay, and Rachel Madel, this has been Talking With Tech. Talk to you soon. <laughs>